to my channel. In this video, as you can tell from the title, it's going to be more focused on what I'm reading for April, but specifically the readathon that I plan on partaking in, which is the OWLs or the OWLs. And this is hosted by uh, G over at Book Roast, and she does the magical readathon multiple times a year with the OWLs now and then in August with the newts. And I'm super excited to be participating in it for the first time this year. I am so excited to do this. I cannot even explain to you how excited I am. But um, due to the coronavirus shutting down all of my local libraries and the idea of me not wanting to buy a lot of books for this because of many college student don't really have money right now. Um, I'm going, I'm not going to be able to do all of the books as graphic novels like I hoped I would. Um, as mentioned in my last video about what I read in March, I was able to go to a very small library for one time and I found one graphic novel and it doesn't really fit any of the prompts, but I'll be trying to read it anyway. Um, so the rest of my books are just going to be books on my shelf that I just haven't read and really wanted to and so I'm gonna find as many books as possible on my shelf that can follow the prompts so hopefully I can read all that I need to in order to get the career or at least get the grades in my owls for the career that I want to choose. So speaking of the career that I want to choose I have chosen to be a spell maker because that just sounds really cool really fascinating and kind of it lines up with what I want to be without being super, like, on the nose almost, you know? Uh, but the thing about the Spellmaker is that it does have a lot of requirements, which I'm slightly worried of. And to top it off, I also want to go to two seminars, which are some new things that she added this year. Um, obviously, I'm going to have the link to the original video explaining everything down below so that you can go and get more information about it. You can get... Uh, the links to all the documents that she has on there. She's got some really cool design letters and documents explaining everything. I just haven't printed them off even though I want to. I just haven't right now. Um, so that'll be down below in the description. Um, but yeah, back to it. I want to be a spell maker, which just seems so cool because it's like researching different spells and like where they come from and then creating your own to keep magic alive in today's world. And then the two seminars I want to go to are Merfolk Linguistics, which is very on the nose for me. Anything I can do to learn more languages, like ancient runes, Merfolk Linguistics, like whatever, throw it to me. I love that kind of stuff. And then the other one I wanted to do was the Amagus one about transforming into a different animal. I just thought that was such a cool element from the Harry Potter universe that I had always wanted to embrace in daily life and obviously can't because I am ashamed to say I am a muggle even though I don't want to be. Um, so I, this is just another way I can kind of get in touch with that really cool concept and so I am planning a lot during the month of April but you know exams are in May so hopefully I'll be okay. But now I'm going to get into the requirements of what it would be for me to do both of those seminars and be a spellmaker. So the first one is I have to complete one uh, book that fulfills the requirement for ancient runes and the prompt for that is to read a book with a heart in the title or on the cover of the book. So I'm gonna go find a book that fills this prompt. I don't think I have a lot of books that do that so wish me luck. readathon is going to be ancient runes which I'm super excited for and then I read the prompt and the prompt is to read a book with the word heart in the title or with a heart on the cover and the thing is I looked all over my bookshelf and I really didn't find anything that had heart in the title or a heart on the cover and I was like oh my goodness what am I gonna do I don't have a book for it right first prompt I don't have a book for it come on and then I looked at the required reading that I have for my literature class and the book that we have to read at the end of the month is called The Destroyer by Victor Lavales. 
It's a graphic novel, and if you look real close, that's a heart. It's not the traditional heart shape, not a heart, but like, it's an anatomical graphic novel heart. So this is actually what I'm going to read for my requirement for Ancient Ruins, also my requirement for my real life college class, and it's a graphic novel. And it's April, and I was hoping to read graphic novel in April, so here I go. I am really excited to read this because someone in my class actually has read it before and was like, it's good, so I'll be interested. Um, but I might have to wait till the end of April, depending on like when my class is reading it. But you know, if I read ahead, it's not the worst thing in the world, right? So yeah, this is what I'm going to be using to complete Ancient Ruins. Interesting, I know, but here I go. And then the next class that I'm going to have to read for is Arithmancy. Now the thing is for Arithmancy is that I have to read it for being a spellmaker, but also Arithmancy is for the merfolk language, linguistics seminar. So for that, I have to read two different books. And the prompt for Arithmancy is to read a book that is not part of your favorite genre. Now, I have some books that are obviously not part of my favorite genre, and like obviously as reading graphic novels, not my favorite genre, but you know, something that I am going to read. First one I'm going to read is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, the graphic novel. The story is by Ransom Riggs and the art is by Cassandra Dean. I am, it's interesting because this book is not initially a graphic novel, it is just a regular novel, but I went to my dad's school's library and I found the graphic novel version of it. And so I'm interested in coming at it knowing that it was a novel but still not reading the novel, like I still haven't read the story. So this is going to be the first one that I read for my arithmetic class. Um, it's like my other graphic novel. So I'm very interested. It's going to be very interesting. I think it's going to have like slight aspect of like horror thriller maybe. Um, just because I have seen the movie. So I'm curious how it translates into the book, especially as a graphic novel. Um, so I'm interested in this. I am excited to read this. The next book that I'm reading for Arithmancy is my is another book and this one is a much shorter book which is good because I am reading what is it 11 books 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 books in one month plus the books for my classes so I will choose a shorter book over a longer one just so I can get it all done and because of that the next book that I'm reading for uh, my arithmetic class is the Little Prince, I will be reading the English translation of it because that is what I have. However, in the future I do hope to read um, the French original, but for now I have the English and so the English is what I'm going to read. This is a little more of like a children's story, but it's good for all ages kind of thing, which is again not something normally that I read. So I'm very interested to read this. I've been wanting to read this ever since I got it. Um, so yeah, that's going to be my other arithmetic book. If this is not a graphic novel, it's not a graphic novel, but it is still illustrated. A little bit of a change in camera view, but that's just due to I still don't have quite the perfect place to film yet, and my phone died, and just, oh, it's a whole thing, but just ignore the whole shift in frame. Okay. Also, it has gotten darker outside, so the lighting is worse, and I apologize for that. Just throughout the video, the video quality has just gone down, and I'm sorry. I'm still figuring all that out now that I am back home, and I do not have a bright light in my room, but I am planning on getting one, but I can't leave the house, so we're just gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna work it out. It'll be great. Anyway, but let's continue on with the video now that I've disclaimed this whole bad filming quality. Moving back into the video. So then the next class that I need to complete is astronomy and the prompt for that one is to read a book just while it's dark outside. Like there's nothing that you have to choose about the book. It just it has to be dark outside which is not going to be a hard one for me because that's when I do 
majority of my reading anyway. It's always before bed, after I've done all of my work for the day, because that's just, that's how I calm down, it's how I, you know, it's just, it's a good way to, like, wind down, but it's also very dangerous, because I could either go to bed at 11, 12 o'clock like I mean to, or I could go to bed at 2 or 3 in the morning, who knows? Um, so I think that it all depends on what book I choose, and the book I have chosen for that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I chose this one, yes, I chose it ironically, because it is night circus. I have to read the book at night when it's dark out. That is precisely the only reason I chose this book, other than it's on my shelf, I wanted to read it, I've seen lots of good critiques on it. Um, yeah, so this one is more about, obviously, a magical circus that only happens at night, but apparently there's some competition between the main two characters, and it may end in a situation that is not good for one of them. <laughs> Death, possibly, I think. Um, yeah, it's just kind of a magical circus that appears at night randomly in different places, so it sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds like just a really good night read which is why I'm reading it at night. Also, it's called The Night Circus, so I'm gonna stop waving the book in our face while I say nothing about it. But yeah, I'm excited to read this one. It is gonna be a bit thicker, though. Like, it is, you know, like 500 pages, so it'll be a little challenging for me to get this done along with the other 10 books, but I'm really gonna try my best. I'm hoping that it will be enough of a page turner where I'll do like a chunk of reading every night, but we'll see. So this is my astronomy. Now that we're finally out of the A's, the next class that I will have to complete is Charms, and the prompt for Charms is to read a book with an all white or majority white cover, and so the book for that that I have chosen is called An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Howard. An Unkindness of Magicians by Cat Howard. Obviously, this book is all slash majority white. There's a little bit of like gray on the book, but it is majority white, so I am excited to read this. So what this book is about is basically it's magicians in New York, and every like 20 years or so, there starts this whole competition where each family chooses a competitor, and they have to compete for who is like the top family of magicians or things like that. i um, not completely sure, but I don't like knowing too much about the books before I read them, which is why in these TBRs I don't always give a lot of summaries about the books I'm going to read, because it's like, I know that this book has magic and competition, and that's good enough for me. Um, if I, if those, like, basic one sentence summary doesn't capture me in, I'm not going to be super excited to read a book. So that's why I don't put a lot of work into it. I really want to be surprised. I guess I also just don't want it to be where I get an idea in my head of what the book is going to be. And then if the book isn't that, I don't want to be disappointed or annoyed or saying, oh, the author should have done it this way because it's not my story. It's their story. So I very much prefer to know very little about the story so I can just follow it and be happy with what it is rather than what I wish it was. Um, so this is going to complete my charms requirement. After that, I need to complete my divination class. And what divination's prompt was, it was very interesting and kind of scary, I will admit, was to do a book chosen randomly, like a random generator type thing. So I took, I figured out all the books I'm going to read during April, and then I took the rest of the books on my shelf that I own, that I have not read, and I put that into a random generator online. And the book that I ended up choosing for me, which I am going to read, is The Killing Woods by Lucy Christopher. Um, I mean, The Killing Woods, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Death happens in the woods. How divination to pick a mystery novel, one that you gotta see into the future to know what the ending is, cause, and you're trying to figure it out. So I feel like it's very fitting for divination, so of course, the random generator picked this for my divination read, The Killing Woods. For my herbology class, I have to read a book that starts with the letter M, which is interesting for herbology, but I mean, makes sense, M, Mandrake or Mantagora, makes sense, right? 
So for this one, I've chosen Master and Margarita, the English translation. I am not reading it in Russian. I can barely read Harry Potter in Russian, let alone something as dense as the Master and Margarita. This is a little bit more of a philosophical book, and I know this because I actually started reading it a long time ago, and I didn't finish it. And I really want to finish it for a number of reasons. It was given to me by the first person who ever started to teach me Russian. He taught me the alphabet and he helped me learn how to introduce myself before I ended up going to Kyrgyzstan where I had to learn a lot more Russian so I could teach English to Russian students. Anyway, whole other part of my life there. Um, so I started reading this book but it's just super dense and super like philosophical. Um, that I just, it's taken me a while to get through it, and then with school, it's made it really busy, so I'm choosing this for my herbology class so that I can finally get through Master and Margarita, plus it's a double M, so I mean, hopefully that also will let me do really well on my OWLs, is not only finishing this book, but double M. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling at strings for her quite a few of these, but you know, it's what you gotta do. When you're reading 11 of books, 11 books, it's what you gotta do. Next up is History of Magic. And again, with this one, this prompt is to read a book about witches and wizards. And there was really only like one book on my shelf that it has magic in a sense of witches and wizards, you know, like other ones are like, magicians or just magic in itself not a lot of witches and wizards that I haven't read but it's history of magic and the one book that I chose that is about witches just so happens to be the one historical fiction that I bought to read in January when I was reading historical fiction and then didn't get to and again I did not even realize that the book I chose was a historical fiction for history of magic until right now as I'm saying it to the camera and that is The Witches of St. Petersburg by Imogen Edward Jones. Imogen? Imogen? Imogen Edward Jones. I'm gonna go with Imogen because it's St. Petersburg and in Russian it's a g sound. Unless Imogen. No. Imogen Edward Jones. Um, so this, like I said, is a historical fiction. Obviously, it takes place in St. Petersburg, and it's about these women who are being, who are accused of being witches. And yeah, I think they are witches. They, it just says that they dabbled in the occult. So I'm very interested to see how that like qualifies. And yeah, it's historical fiction. It's a book that I got with the intent to read soon, and then just never got to it. So I'm happy that I'm finally getting to it, especially since now I know that I really do enjoy reading historical fiction. So, Witches of St. Petersburg, historical fiction, history of magic. Could it get any better? Four Potions, which is another book I have to read for my, um, for my career, spell making. It, the prompt is to read a book under 150 pages. Um, and it's interesting because the book I chose for this, I wasn't quite sure if it was under 150 pages. So I opened up to the very last page, and I don't think you can see this, but it's 148 pages. That's right, two pages underneath what it needs to be for my potions requirement. So then I decided to read Peter Pan, you know, this classic fairy tale by J.M. Bari. Barry, Barry, Barry. Um, again, this was one that I was going to read for a previous readathon um, because it was so short, and then I just didn't get to it because I didn't need to. But now I have to read a short book, and I'm very glad that I do because I'm going to be reading so many books during the next month. I'm very glad that this one is 148 pages, so I can finally read this classic. I love classic books. Makes sense. I love historical fiction if I love classic books. Um, so I will be reading Peter Pan. Okay, almost done. I have one more class and that is Transfiguration. However, I am reading two books for Transfiguration. 
One is for my career of being a spellmaker, and the other is for the Animagus seminar. If I end up only getting to one book for Transfiguration, it's going to count towards my, um, towards my career rather than the seminar, just to be clear, because I want to be able to take my newts in August, but I would really love to get to both. I would love to transform into one of the creatures that I will be reading about in one of these two books. So the first one that I'm going to be reading is called Sinner by Maggie Safewater. This, if you recognize it, you'll remember that this is the fourth book in the series of The Wolves of Mercy Falls, which I talk about last, which I talked about in February. I talked about in February's video. Um, that is because it is the first three books were romance and I compared it a lot to Twilight because I read it at the same time and it had very similar themes and characters and whatnot. Um, but if you watch that video, you know that I read the first three books and this is the fourth book. I started it and just didn't finish it because it follows um, other characters that weren't the main characters. It follows like Cole and Isabel instead of Grace and Sam <laughs> instead of Grace and Sam and I wasn't super inclined because I didn't want it to be the first three books were about Grace and Sam and then all of a sudden the fourth book still in the same series the fourth book is about Cole and Isabel and I just wasn't super excited about that if if this book was going to happen I wished it would have been an independent novel but now that I've had some time away from the series I think I'll have a more open idea to reading this book for Cole and Isabel rather than associating it too much with the first three books in the series with um, Grace and Sam. So obviously this book is about werewolves and this guy has to now lead the pack after asking to become a wolf. And so, well not asking, but like, hey, do you want to be a wolf? Yes, I would love that better than the life I have now. Okay, you're a wolf, and now you have to take care of the pack. Um, so, yeah, this is what I'm going to read first, because I would like to finish the series, because I don't generally like leaving series unfinished. So, Sinner is going to be my first Transfiguration book. The second Transfiguration book is going to be called The Mermaid. It is by Christina Henry. This book I also got recently because I have a, I had a bookstore right across from the building I lived in at college. So I mean, it was gonna happen. I was gonna buy books. Um, and so this one, The Mermaid, is obviously about a mermaid and what I think happens to her, so she's a mermaid, transforms into a human, joins P.T. Barnum's circus, where she is circused around, paraded around as a mermaid. I'm not sure if she dresses up like one or if she actually turns back into a mermaid for the show. Um, that is one thing that I am interested in figuring out as I read the book. And then I don't know, you know, in the end, does she stay human? Does she go back to being a mermaid? I don't know. Um, personally, I am really excited to read this. I'm very inclined. Um, and so this is going to be what I read for the seminar of how to be an animagus. The thing is though about being an animagus is that I don't get to choose a mythical creature. I have to choose an animal technically to be an animagus. So I guess it would make more sense if like the book about werewolves was for the seminar because like I could choose wolf or dog to be my animagus and that would make more sense versus transfiguration. Like did both are about transforming creatures but this one could be for an animagus versus this one could not but I want to get this read first because I want to finish the series versus this is a standalone ideally I would like to be able to read both but I mean they're both they're not super huge books like they're not terrible but I have a huge stack next to me of all the books I'm gonna read so this will take priority and it will go towards my class unless I have time to read them both, and then I can do the class and the seminar. Oh, my arm is resting on the stack of books, and it's right here. So much. So that is it for this video. This was a nice long video about all the books that I'm reading in April. I'm not going to be reading any 
books in April that I haven't mentioned here just because because I know that April was going to be my month of graphic novels and while I am still technically reading two graphic novels and one illustrated book um, that that just isn't quite enough of graphic novel for me to read in order to really kind of get a grasp on the genre so I'm gonna put that on pause because I no longer have access to a place that has a bunch of graphic novels so I'm really just gonna be focusing on the readathon and just minimizing the amount of books on on my shelf that I own I own all of these books except for one the only one I don't own is this one is center the fourth one in the series um, so I'm just going to be really focusing on getting books on my shelves on my have read this list rather than, oh, I haven't read it yet. I'll get there eventually. Um, so yeah, if you like this video, let me know by clicking the like button. If you have read any of these books or if you are also doing the Magical Readathon by Book Roast by G then comment down below what career you're doing, if you're doing any of the seminars, if you've done it before, you know, what you're gonna read, what are your requirements, and things like that. Um, I am super excited, and I would be so excited to see what you guys are gonna be reading and what you're gonna be going for, because she added so many new careers this year. Like, I know what it was like last year because I watched the video for last year but it wasn't April so I wasn't going to do the readathon because it wasn't the right time but like I knew what it was and this year she just added so many new things and I'm super excited for it um, so yeah like this video comment down below subscribe if you want to see my journey throughout the month of you know me actually attempting to read all 11 books during this time or or if you want to continue with me on my journey of reading different genres and you're like oh I was really hoping you would read more graphic novels and do a review of that I am gonna be doing that at some point I'm not quite sure when it really just kind of depends when this whole situation kind of lightens up and my libraries open up again um, then you know when that happens I will definitely hop back on the train of alright I'm gonna read some graphic novels now um, but if you have suggestions for those also comment down below I will still be making notes and making a TDR of that. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. So I would say good luck to you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. You know, wash your hands. It's a very simple, very quick thing you can do. A couple of times a day, wash your hands. Um, they say practice social distancing. I think all of us are pretty much quarantined in our houses. Um, but if you do go outside, you know, don't go up and hug people or smack them or anything you know just like polite wave or a little head nod or verbal like hello I think should be enough of a greeting in a time like this um so yeah stay safe stay healthy and happy reading